Hey everyone, John Stenstrom here from the Cast and Spear podcast, and today we are doing something a little bit different. We're calling it Coach's Corner. That's where my buddy, the coach, goes out into the real world, sits down with somebody that I don't have a chance to do myself, and this time it's Roman Castro. You've probably seen him. He runs a podcast called The Spear. He has a Roman Castro vlog, Spiro Nation. He's kind of touched every different facet of fishing on the internet. And in this episode, they kind of touch upon why he likes to start so many projects, what his philosophy is behind it, why the internet is so powerful for somebody who does want to be creative. They also get into some tips about offshore fishing and what it's like fishing the IV. But before we jump into the podcast, I want to give a huge shout out to Huge Aves who left an iTunes review saying, I've been fishing for quite some time and still get a ton of great ideas and advice from John's podcast. Highly recommend to anyone who likes fishing, whether you're a beginner or a pro. Thank you so much. If you haven't already done so, please leave a rating and a review. I read them all. It will help other people find this podcast. But without further ado, please welcome Coach and Roman Castro. All right, you're here with the coach. This is Coach's Corner in conjunction with uh, Cast and Spear. We have a very special guest. I guess I coached sort of at the beginning of his hook and line career. We got Roman Castro with us, a great dude and uh, owner of Bay Wars and uh, Spotty Republic and guy really putting himself out there. So I've always tried to support him and all of his endeavors, even if it's not exactly what I do. <laughs> yeah, Roman, what about your journey? Awesome. Hey, well, thanks for having me on the show. Hi, everybody out there. Well, I've always had the intention of maintaining a open mind and always be learning something, whether it's something to do with fishing or to do with, I guess, life. I mean, sorry to get so deep right off no, the bat. No problem. No problem at all. We can go as deep. This rabbit hole goes a long <laughs> way down. <laughs> like I've always felt like uh, there's no gatekeepers as, as there was in times past, right? Like if you go back to like the old medieval days, right? <laughs> Where like you had to be of some status to own a book, yeah, to be able to acquire knowledge, yeah. right? And then the book was invented or whatever, and and the the print press was invented, and it was easier to to make books. So now you didn't have to handwrite books, so they weren't as expensive, and it made knowledge more accessible to common people, right? And then so take that, fast forward all the evolutions we've come across until now, right? Yep. And you have the internet, and internet basically made it to where like this show and like my show, you can now come up with a with a crazy show idea that you that you like or that you think even a thousand people might like and something can come out of it, right? Yeah, you can actually make it viable and make it work for you. And yeah. There's nobody saying, hey, you know what? Your voice is weird. You, you speak funny. <laughs> so therefore, I'm not going to give you an opportunity to prove yourself on a, on a mic. Like you don't have to have a radio station to have a show anymore, right? Yeah, yeah absolutely. You don't have to have a, uh, what is it? A TV station to broadcast yourself, right? Yeah, you don't you need any of that. Yeah, you can broadcast yourself with the phone now, right? So if you're the younger crowd, you take that for granted. It's not, whatever, anybody can go live. It's not a big deal, <laughs> right? Yeah. But to me it is because that's something that 10 years ago, 10 years ago, that's not, that's not a long time, right? Yeah, you're right. The the, the movie Gladiator, <laughs> right? It's 2020. It, it's it's uh, It came out in 2000. Good Lord. You're making me feel old. Um, I, feel, I feel old, <laughs> right? So that so anyway, let's bring it back. So that tells me that in, in less than half the time that that, that movie's been out, right? Like we've gone from like being able to, to, advert to to just basically put out whatever content you feel is worthy of being out there, right? So and it takes me to like the kind of stuff I like to make. I like to make stuff for people that are on a journey to somewhere, right? A journey. What an interesting word so, to use, Roman. No, so yeah, I mean, like the way I think about it is, I combine the two things that I love to do, which is to learn and to create stuff, right? So. Whatever the next thing I'm going to learn, I'll be creating stuff as I'm learning it so that the next guy can have an easier time about it for two reasons, right? Reason number one is um, I want to help them, right? I genuinely want to help people. And and down the road, eventually, maybe my kids will watch my stuff or listen to my stuff and they can learn from it. Because right now they're young, they're running around, they just want to play, right? Of course. But if something were to happen to me before they're old enough to want to learn the stuff that I was uh, into, they can have that, right? So that's kind of like a cool cool uh, thought. Uh, and then the second thing is um, I detest, and it's, I know it's a strong word. <laughs> People that misguide new people. Oh, you and you and I have some similar tendencies okay. in this regard. So, so I know it's funny at the time, right? But a, it's disrespectful to another person that is trying to come up on a sport, trying to trying to like learn. They're trying to do it the right way by asking, as opposed to just going and doing the wrong thing, getting in trouble for it, and giving all of us a bad eye, a black eye, right? Oh yeah. So, so my the sec my second thing is I want to help the new guys learn the right way, kind of like give them the right role models, or the right uh, guidance. 
so that they don't so that they're not out there doing dumb things like shooting up a lot like shooting a, a garibaldi right <laughs> or that, oh, you or can that keep, guy you can keep four orange ones you know <laughs> yeah. like oh it's, it's like a, a big black sea bass oh yeah you can take those like come, like you gotta like yeah yeah they should do their do, their own due diligence and look up the regs on their own i get that piece of it but you're not making things better by trying to confuse them to be funny yeah right so that those are the, those are like the main my main motivations i guess you could say so i guess i'm on the other side of the coin from you i guess on I this one <laughs> on, that, on that one yeah, well, it's it's the same thing. It's right. just I'm on the other side. Okay. Like, I see people, oh, God, you'll, you'll hear me. If you heard any of my other stuff, you hear me harp on this over and over again. It's one of my pet peeves. So the guy goes down to the tackle shop, and he goes, you know, you know, I see lots of these cool fish called yellowtail on Facebook. What, what do I need for that? The guy hands him some $350 <laughs> Round reel or low or even worse, a low profile bait caster of some nice. kind hands it to him. Lexa three hundred. <laughs> yeah, the Lexa. Lex, you know what? The, you need this trank. Yeah, you need 500. this. Yeah, you need this tranks five right here. Yeah. We're gonna we're gonna fill it absolutely to the spool with braid. Nice. And then you're gonna use this on a real short fluorocarbon leader about five <laughs> yards long. And uh, when you see the flash of the green in the water, you just pitch your sardine out in front of him. And when he eats it, just hook him and reel him to the boat. Nice. Yeah. Nice. So easy. Yeah. yeah. 15 pulled hooks later, the guy's like, <laughs> what am I doing wrong? Um, This wouldn't have happened if you'd have got an old Squitter Jr., loaded it up with 25-pound mono, and done the same thing you just did on an old fiberglass rod, because that'll all absorb the head shakes from the yellowtail, and you won't pull the hook. Exactly. So, the the <laughs> or, or the other suggestion might be to ask the guy how long he's been fishing. Right? Yeah. Maybe start in the bay. Get familiar with how a reel even works. Yeah. What drag is, do, right? What the difference between a conventional reel and a spinning reel is. Yeah, right? do, do a couple half days with a jig master on an old rod. That's true. Edu- yeah. That's education 101. That yeah. same five, yeah. six, seven, eight hundred dollars you'd be spending so, on a combo and braid. So who's so who's um so whose fault is that? Is it the guy who's looking for to get a yellowtail, or is it the guy that sold him the, the really expensive combo just to get a sale? <laughs> well, the the new guys out there have to understand and they called me the coach for a reason, as right. you might have learned years ago now, Roman. You know, I remember a certain dude standing out on the jetty next to me looking very <laughs> perplexed. Yeah, but, we'll go we'll go into that story. We should. Because <laughs> you mentioned it, so let's bring it up and let's let's tell everybody right. what yeah, happened. Yeah, no problem. I mean, I, 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 it's not, it hasn't been just you. Right. There have been a lot of people yeah. standing next to me on the yeah. jetty looking very confused because this old guy next to him is telling them things that they've never heard before <laughs> and they have, n- have never considered. <laughs> So, you know, I mean, no, no one method is perfect for everybody, but new people, this is what I would tell you. Instead of going to your local tackle shop guy necessarily, or going to a guy that has an agenda and selling you something, find some old guy out there on the rocks and talk to him. There've been an awful lot of people who've come up to me and said, you know, I just don't get it. I I go down to the water. I I throw this lure that I've seen on Facebook a million times and I, I just don't catch big fish like those guys. And then I go, I hand those people a spinning reel with some 12 or 15 pound test on it and a number six hook and some shrimp with a, with a fire pit nail on the end. And I say, this rig won't get snagged very often. Yep. All those lures you've been breaking off are a waste of time and money for what we're doing here. Yeah. And I'm not saying they're a waste in general. Yeah, but if you don't know how to use them, yeah, but you it, don't know how to get unstuck. Yeah. yeah, if you can't figure out how to present the bait to the fish. Yeah. If, if, if those first lessons, the lessons you learned on the jetty, with a telescopic rod in your hand, without even a reel on it. Yeah. If those le- those those lessons you caught on instantly. So I mean, like I say, the old guy out on the rocks, or you see that guy standing down by the dock somewhere, and he's out looking at the boats with that faraway look in his eye. That guy's been there and done that, <laughs> yeah. and he won't steer you wrong because he doesn't have anything to sell you. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So I mean, that's my, kind of my two cents. About I, I like that. I like that though. I like that, and it also keeps those guys engaged. That's good, and they do they do have a lot to share. Yeah. I mean, you're telling me, man, on Saturday morning, I was visiting with Al Kalin, and I just felt so humbled just even being there, sitting next to the man himself. I mean, how many calico bass has has the root beer flake scampi caught yeah. over the 50 years or 45 <laughs> years it's been in existence? I mean, a, a deadlier tool for midwater halibut fishing has never been made than that lure. So tell us what that lure is like, because some people haven't seen it. Well, a lot of you'll never see one, but <laughs> it was uh, basically a really hard PVC style plastic bait. It's not the soft plastic we have today, but the t- it had twin tails that curled inward at the end, and it kind of had a shrimp type body on okay. it. Yeah, I think I know what you're talking about. Uh, uh, dude, the yeah. root beer scampi. It had little metal flakes in it. It was an absolutely deadly tool in its time. It still would be, of yeah. course. Yeah. Something something these new guys like to forget is that old lures still work. Yeah, that's good. I mean, my favorite tuna lure has been 
in design and processing for somewhere on the order of 400 years. I mean, think about that. What is that? It's like a cedar the, plug? The diamond jig. Oh. The diamond jig has been around a long time, yeah. and it was used by guys who made lines out of cat gut. That's cool. And fished it in Scandinavia and Iceland back in the day. I mean, this is a lure with a pedigree. That's fun. And I, I hate to say, the, one of the modern variants, they really nailed it. They really did. The ahi assault jig is, is just on suspended tuna, just fatal. Nice. Fatal lure. Nice. Anyway. Cool. <laughs> this is supposed to be about you, Roman, not about No, that's okay. <laughs> I'm learning, too. Sure. I'll, take it. I'll, I'll take whatever knowledge I can get. So. <laughs> So tell me about Spotty Republic. Okay, so uh, let's see. I'm, I'm trying to figure out how far back to go. <laughs> as far back as you want. <laughs> so I I um I have the YouTube channel where I fish for my kayak uh, because it's super convenient to fish the bays, right? It takes me like 15 minutes yep. to load my kayak in from like saying, like, hey, let's go. I can be on the road in 15 minutes, slide the kayak in the truck and get, on, get out to the bay. And then it takes me another 10, 15 minutes to get to the bay. And I can launch it another 10 minutes. So in 45 minutes, I can be fishing, which is kind of cool. Well, that's pretty good. And on the water, not from the shore, right? Yeah. So, so that, that's why it's taking 45 minutes. But uh, for the, the fun factor, the fun per hour, <laughs> catching spotties <laughs> on like, you know, like it's just amazing. It's super fun. And it gets that, it gets, it gets, gives you enough of a rush that, to get that fishing bug, like subside for a couple of hours or a couple, like a couple of days, right? <laughs> Depending on how good of a session you have, you catch a halibut and it's like, oh, you're good for a couple of days, <laughs> right? Uh, so that's how it started. And then uh, I was, like I said before, like I like to document what I'm learning so that the next guys have an easier time about it. Because uh, I realized that if I record and, and document things as I'm learning them, the little insights that I later on will take for granted don't get recorded unless I do it when it was an insight. Uh, makes sense? Yes, absolutely. Like if I try to go back now to tell you like what it's like to begin kayak fishing <laughs> i'm like i don't know there's so many things i i already take for granted you know and that stuff only comes to light when i take somebody that's new to it like i don't guide or anything like that i just have fun and fish with people that like to watch my videos right so if somebody says hey i'm, I'm gonna be in town do you, you want to go fish i'm like sure let's go do you have a kayak sure okay so we go kayak fishing or we go shore fishing uh and then i'll watch what they're doing wrong and i'll and, and i'll 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 give them tips right but it's all similar stuff that i was doing when i was starting out of so course like, I mean, it's just, I think it's just a natural progression. Uh, but it's all stuff that I kind of like have videos about on at this point. Right. <laughs> so I'm like, hey, dude, go watch this video so you can like learn how to do that part. Or like I'll explain to them again if they don't understand it. But so that evolved into uh, a little community that I call uh, Spotty Republic. It's just, it started like just, it's just basically a Facebook group and an Instagram group. Uh, you'll know about the group because you've either watched some of my videos and I've mentioned it or you've hit me up before and, and we fished together and I said, hey, uh, in order for me to keep track of everybody that wants to fish, it's easier for me to just do it in a group. So, like, I'm not trying to be exclusive or say, oh, you're not in the group, you can't fish with me. No, none of that kind of stuff. It's mostly so that it's more convenient for me to say, hey, guys, I'm going to fish on Saturday, uh, Mission Bay, and we're going to launch at 7, meet at Dana Landing, right? And if anybody, if anybody wants to come, they could just jump on and say, oh, I'll be there, I'll be there, I'll be there, and I'll know how many people to expect, and then uh, we just, we'll fish. You can stay as long as you want, all that, all, that, all that stuff. Like, it's not like a tournament or anything, right? It's, it's kind of like when that random moron in a boat <coughs> drives past you and Dane, and you're like, what the hell was that ding-dong? So that was a coach warp <laughs> cruising by, creeping. Uh, so you... Yeah, right. It's like it's random. It could be like yeah. a, it could be like two or three people, and that's fun. Or it could be like ten dudes, like ten kayaks just show up out of nowhere, like on a weekday or something, like or wow. a night, right? And that's kind of it's fun. That's awesome. It's fun. So it makes everything it makes everything more exciting. You know, like there's different levels. People that know more than you, which is cool, which is great. And then people that are trying to figure it out, which is also great, because I think to be a, a good mentor, you have to be able to speak with somebody that's coming up and and be able to empathize with them, and then also be able to have someone to ask questions to. Right. So you want to be, you want to have somebody above you and someone below you as far as like skill level goes. Oh yeah. Right. Of course. So it works out. And so then eventually like the little gatherings started getting a little bit bigger <laughs> and like, uh, we're like, you know what? Everybody's out here. It's Saturday morning. It's like, feels like a tournament because everybody's showing up with all their gear and everybody's excited. And like last minute, like literally before we get on the water, like out the, at the boat ramp would be like, Hey, so uh, there, does everybody have their hog troughs? Like, Oh no, I don't have a hog trough. Like, Oh, well, dang. Well, you know what? Just keep track of how many fish you catch, and whoever catches the most fish, I'll give you like a shirt or something, right? <laughs> or I'll give you a coupon code for like one of the shirts. So like I'm, I'm also doing Grumpy Spotty, which is like an apparel stuff. And it's basically uh, 
a spotted baby ass drawing that I that I put together uh, when I was at jury duty because <laughs> I didn't I didn't find any like spotted baby ass gear that I liked. <laughs> So I drew one, and then I, I sketched it out at first, and then I digitized it so it's got the line art. So it looks, you know, that's my little grumpy spotty logo that you guys see. And so basically whatever I see that I would like to exist, I would like to have uh, into come into existence, if it's not already there, I'll, I'll create it or I'll make a version of it that I feel like I would wear, right? And then put it out there. If somebody likes it, great. If not, it's no big deal. It's not skin off my back. It's just something I wanted to see exist, right? <laughs> so, so, so at that point... Uh, more people started showing up to our little get-togethers, and I figured, you know what, let's make it more official. Let's open it up to to other people in the fishing community, right? Um, it's not for me. It's not a a a money-making play. Yeah, it's like it's a continuation of that small group thing, right? Except that we're opening it up to people that are not in Spotty Republic, a Facebook group or or, or Instagram group, uh, because it's it's fun to fish in, in a group and it's fun to, to do like tournaments. Um, <laughs> The the thing with uh, with running a tournament <laughs> is that I'm like a one man band, right? I have a couple of fr- people that help. Like you volunteered to help with the food, which is like a, a huge help. It was a, a, an amazing help. And and be- before I even went ahead and announced it, like we did we did one other get together after I set up the website. So this is now, now we're talking. Now about, we're talking about Bay Wars. Now we're talking about Bay Wars. So this is a, this and what and what which what website is it? Uh, Baywars.com. Baywars.com. Yeah. So All right. so I wanted to have a place that managed or made it easier for people to sign up so that I wouldn't have to spend so much time uh, handling paperwork, getting payment, all that stuff. So I, <laughs> so I, so I made a site for it and have it all automated. Uh, the rules are all there. The, you can sign on there. You can sign your life away. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all of the, you know, like the, like the, um, what they call the liability sign offs and stuff. Yeah. And then you can pay through play through PayPal. Right now we're doing kayak fishing tournaments mostly. Um, and I'm doing them at $20 entry fee. So twenty dollar entry fee plus like a dollar processing fee for PayPal because otherwise I can't put in the whole twenty dollars into the pot, right? So then from there it's kind of like uh, we did our first event a couple of weeks ago. It was pretty fun. It was it was super the weather, fun. The weather totally sucked, <laughs> but people showed up and they had a blast. Like it was like uh, I was sitting back talking with Gilbert from uh, Trail Forty. Yep. He, he, he was one of the sponsors. He's like our our only sponsor at the time. <laughs> um, and he. We're talking about it. We're saying, yeah, like it kind of sucks, but like these guys are having like the time of their lives. They're like, they're like, yeah. it's an adventure. Yeah, you know, it's, it's still it's, epic. Re- it's, it's still relatively safe because you're in the bay. Yeah. Uh, uh, but like, like the memories that are being made. Like you see the guys talking to each other and like, uh, like becoming like better friends. And you're like, yeah, that's what it's about. Yeah, it's about community. At, yeah. at beginning and end of the day, it's about community. Yeah. And so, so it was cool. Like that was exciting. And I was, oh, this, this is great. So like it worked out. Um, uh, the tournament was like a legal spotted best only. Uh, but only one legal spot of was caught. So before the tournament started, we agreed that if only one was caught, that winner would take all. Winner takes all. Winner yep. takes all because uh, I, d- I didn't want to do a split the rest amongst the losers. L- well, technically would have been the losers, right? Like yeah. we're, we're not everybody gets a trophy type of thing. It's, it's yeah. like winner takes all, right? So everybody was cool with that. So we went with that. And then unfortunately, one guy caught <laughs> illegal. And uh, not well, not unfortunately, because I mean it, it happened. Like there's well, a ton of fish caught. Be be glad that somebody didn't catch illegal. That way you're not at the end like oh lord. <laughs> <laughs> that's true, that's true. So it was, it was fun. It was fun. So like, but yeah. So that's that's a bit, that's the basics of it. That's like what what the storyline is with that. And um, I think it'll it has potential for growth. I'm not trying to push it. I'm not trying to like have one every weekend or anything like that. I think I think I think you're on the right path right there. Yeah. Just my personal opinion for what it's worth. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, it's it's. I see it as like a as as a way to give back, right? Because then um, I know there's a ton of other tournaments in town uh, and online. <laughs> the shore pounders. Oh, I like that one. I like that one. <laughs> but see, the guys, the, the guys that fish from the shore have the shore pounders tournament. Like on, uh, SD Fish, they, yeah. uh, DJ Thrills, right? Mm-hmm. That's the guy. Yeah, he does a great. Uh, he's been doing it for a long time. Like I don't even know how long he's been doing it, but they have a whole like fresh. Uh, sorry, a whole uh, shore pounder series, which is cool. Um, but like the kayakers don't have something that was yeah. like. Just kayaks. Like everything is like, oh yeah, you're gonna get tagged on to like a boat event. Yeah. Or you're gonna get tagged on to like a, a another event, but it has everything. So I wanted to have something that was just for kayakers and 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 float tubers and stand up paddle boards, right? Yeah. Uh this next tournament we might do some shore pounders, uh, a different division. 
if there's enough interest. Like right now, just basically, like I said, it's me uh, managing all the stuff. And, and if it, it gets too overwhelming, then I, w- I want to scale it back. So I want to have make sure I have everything in place and the right people that are like volunteering regularly. What? You're not going to hire staff <laughs> and turn this into the Shogun out see, here? But, yeah, but that's, see, that, that's, a, that's a thing. Like, it's like a, that's the thing. Like, I, I don't, I'm not seeing it as a, as a money-making thing. So it's hard for me to, to like hire staff. Like at that yeah. point, then you're taking some money off of the top to cover the payroll or something, right? Yeah. So it's only going to get as big as the community wants in, in the form of like, hey, you know, we would love to do boats and we would love to do uh, add the shore division. But if there's not enough interest to help run it, then then it's going to stay where it is. Right. Okay. Because I want it to be like self-sustaining. I don't want to pay more out of my pocket uh, for it. Um, I feel like donating my time and like the, the technology for it is like at well, that point it should take off on its own if it's going to take off. Yeah. yeah. I, w- I would say so, too. Next time, I will bring some more smoky hot dogs. Oh, nice. <laughs> I only brought either 24 or 32 last time, and they that's vaporized. Good. That's funny. <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's so funny. Yeah, so that, that's the deal with that. Uh, if, it, if it grows into something more than that, that'd be great. Like, uh, now that we have one event under our belt, like, it, so 18 people signed up, and, and uh, 16 people showed up because of the weather. Um, but overall, it was a good event. And uh, now that I have an event done, and people actually showed up. I see that there's an actual interest. Everybody that went was like, what's the next one? This is cool, right? Even your cook was asking, you, when's the next one? <laughs> so now that I know there's, that there's enough interest, um, I feel more comfortable reaching out to like a sponsor and saying, hey, you know, we're doing this event. It's small, uh, but people do show up and we here's a proven concept that works. And then see if people want to, if, if companies are interested in like donating stuff for like a raffle. And then at that point, once you have more raffle items that are like significant, uh, there's, there's definitely more interest in just having people show up. Uh, so th- th- then the driving factor becomes not just the, the, the competition itself and potentially winning uh, some good money and also winning some cool prizes. Even the, even for the first one, we did a bunch of stuff. We did goodie bags. So everybody left home with something. Yeah, you right. guys, I yeah. thought it turned out great. Yeah. It was yeah. awesome. And it was, it was so much fun. And yeah. so other than my people being all loud during <laughs> nah, your that was fun. That was fun. award ceremony. <laughs> that was good. That was good. Yeah, anyway. Yeah. That's fine. So, that, so, that's, so that's, a, that's a story with that. Um, Again, it's just a way to, for me to to provide uh, like an on ramp for somebody that's that has been following me along with the shore fishing to the kayak transition, and then they're learning to fish from the kayak from some of my videos, and then the next transition is for them to start doing competitions so they can get better, right? So that's my challenge to my uh, YouTube subscribers: is hey, learn to fish with me, and now you're ready to start doing tournaments. If you if you want to get into other tournaments, you can even use this tournament as like a like as like a, a springboard. Exactly. Almost, yeah. Yeah. And so once somebody is in a tournament and they realize how it flows, there's the potential for the money to be made, I guess, and for the actual competition, once they get a, a love for that, then they can shift off to other tournaments in town or, or online tournaments or whatever. The point is they're going to feel more comfortable and more capable and ready to jump into other tournaments too. So all this leads me kind of to circle back. You're talking about your journey, and it's funny because I've called fishing a journey for a very long time. Yeah. So kind of at the beginning of your rod and reel thing... You fished with me on the jetty yeah. a couple times. Yep. On video even a couple times. In fact, I think we had one video in there, yeah. Two, I think. Okay. We had one on South Jetty when it was still open. Oh, yeah. And then we had one on North Jetty. The one on South Jetty was kind of a all over the place. Kind of like, <laughs> sort of like the coach. It was just kind of everywhere. I, I, I think I remember that video. It was like when I tried to step off the rock and I stepped into the, I just like fell into the rock. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, so, so tell me, what's it like to fish with the coach? It's actually pretty fun. Uh, it's like at, at first I was like, who is this guy? And then like, it was weird. Cause like, you didn't want to show your face. Yeah. And, and I was like, Oh, okay. Well, okay. It's, it, it'll be fun. And then like, um, so the, the first time we fished, it was with, uh, fixed line poles, right? Yep. First the tel- two times. Yeah. The telescoping ones. Right. Yep. So the first time it was completely new. Right. And, uh, <laughs> I'm trying to figure out how to record, uh, from sh- how to record, our session and to learn at the same time and, and like not annoy you. Right. <laughs> Cause I was, I didn't know how, how I don't know what your personality was like. So I'm trying to like gauge that too, you know? And like, uh, it worked out because like you, you, uh, it was like almost like you were, it was like almost like you were expecting me to ask the questions I was asking. And I was uh, surprised there were so few actually. That's yeah. what I remember. I'm like, this guy knows he can ask me, right? <laughs> <laughs> <all right>. Whatever. <laughs> it was like the whole, that would see for, see for me, from my perspective, it was like the whole, like, Hey, 
you're taking the time to show me something I don't know how to do. So I'm going to try to watch as much as possible and, and, and try to pick it up just by osmosis and, and annoy you with, with as little questions as possible. <laughs> but when I do have a question, it'll be because I can't figure it out. So I feel like that question is more valid. You know what I mean? Well, in my mind, one of the reasons I take the new people out and I hand them a telescopic pole, either from, well, they're all from China, but the reason that I hand, I hand off the old cane pole is the cane pole makes you, it, it literally forces you to focus on the basics. Yeah. Getting a bait on bottom, uh-huh. keeping it there. It, it, it obliges you to obey the rules. Like you, you can't high stick and fish a cane pole. It's impossible. Yeah. It's impossible. Yeah. So the cane pole actually makes the user because you have a fixed amount of line yep. and it's fixed line. Not messing with the reel. Yeah. You're not having backlashes. You're not sending the line underneath the reel. You're not snagging the line on that little stupid line clip thing that I like to take off of all my reels first. <laughs> I forgot to do so the other day. It just totally, yeah, I don't even want to talk about it anyway. <laughs> but the cane pole makes you focus on those basics. Getting that bait, getting it on bottom in front of the fish, focusing those fish in front of you with chum helps a lot, yeah. of course. Yeah. But those basic principles of we're going to take this bait, we're going to get it where the fish are, we're going to put it in their face, and we're going to leave it there for the maximum amount of time possible, that is the same principle that you deal with with yo-yo irons. That's the same principle you deal with with uh, midwater diamond jigging, same principle with the topwater popper, same thing with the, you know, if you're throwing the Z-mans on the 3 8 ounce, yeah. it's the same principle. Yeah. You get that bait, you get it in front of the fish, and you keep it there for the maximum amount of time that you can and That's keep right. it effective. That's so, true. so with new people, I find if they're even half as squirrely as me, dear Lord, help them. <laughs> if they're even half as squirrely as me, it forces them to slow down and focus on what's really important, which is getting that bait in front of the fish for the maximum amount of time you can. Awesome. That's true. So the other thing that, that uh, was good during that session, the first couple of sessions was, I mean, as a new guy, like before, before I got into hook and line fishing, I was spear fishing a lot. So I still, I still spear fish now, but like uh, mostly kayak fish at this point. Um, I had gotten spotties before uh, with like swim baits and stuff, but with the fishing with a cane pole and of course a like cut bait, you get, you get like, an, you get a whole bunch of uh, opportunities to feel what the bite feels like. Yeah. Like they're of course all little opali and stuff are nibbling at the, at the bait. So you get to feel what the actual bite feels like. Yeah. So that was really good. I think I'm, I'm trying to think now, like, uh, things that were unique about that. Cause like if you're learning to fish and you're fishing plastics, you're fishing a swim bait, like swim baits are great. They, they work great. But for a beginner, would I recommend fishing a swim bait? Probably not because it, it you got to keep it in, in the strike zone. You can't let it just soak. Right. Exactly. So, so you're going to get bit on the drop or when you're making it swim very rarely do, do you get hit like when it's just sitting there? Maybe like when it starts moving again after the pause. Or sometimes if it's been moving and you pause it, then, then yeah. they'll take that opportunity. Right. But like it takes it takes a little bit of technique and, and experience to figure out where it's swimming. Like is it right above the grass or is it on the surface because you're bringing it in too fast? Anyway, that's a whole other subject. But like, but but with the, with the cane pole, you get to feel what the bite feels like a lot of times. Yeah. So so you, you get bit many hundreds of yeah. times over the course of each yeah. hour. <laughs> so, so yeah, exactly. So like so so think about it on an average session, right? Say you fish for four hours from shore. How many bites do you think you're gonna get? I don't know. If I was throwing a curl tail and I was doing real good, maybe six or eight, maybe. Okay. I mean, good. if I was no, doing good, that, 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 I would agree. That's fair. That's fair. Okay. Now fishing with a cane pole uh, with <laughs> with live bait, you're gonna get like hundreds, yeah, hundreds, right? hundreds per hour. Right. <laughs> and so you really get, you really develop that feel for that bite. Like you're gonna know what it's, if it's a bite. Yeah. Uh, and and so. you'll and and the other thing with the the cane pole. It, about it making you focus. Yeah. Your whole mind is six inches off the bottom, 20 True. feet away. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So every single part of you is focused on that little tiny point yeah. that's out there in the water. Yeah. You'll feel the, the edge of the kelp tickle your line. Yeah. You feel the lobster tentacles. God, I hate those things. <laughs> <laughs> you feel the lobster tentacles hit your yeah. hit your weight while they're feeling around. You feel the little bait nibblers. And then all of a sudden you get something that's a little different. Yeah. You get something that's a little different. You feel that first pull down and then it's slack. And you're like, what was that? That was the fish picking your bait up and swimming upward in the water column yeah. out of the kelp so it doesn't get eaten by something bigger. <laughs> that's what it was. And <laughs> It makes you focus on that. Yeah. A fixed line is very, it's very intensive fishing yeah. in its own way. Like, you know, you could go down to the bay and just cast a crocodile and catch some mackerel and yeah. its bodies or whatever. Yeah. You totally can. And I'm not, I'm not knocking anybody that does that. Not at all. Yeah. But that's but more like casting practice than. Yeah. Yeah. But in terms of actually fishing in an intensive way where it, it's going to force you to learn quickly. Yeah. And adapt to the scenario in front of you. Yeah, that's I, cool. I mean, that's that's why a lot of the times when I take new people out, I hand them some sort of fixed line rig yep. just to take the guesswork and pain and suffering out of it and to get them the maximum fishing possible. And, and uh, 
avoid dealing with backlashes. Backlashes. <laughs> Lord help you if you've got a real, like, well, I don't want to call these people out. They were nice enough to send a reel to John to test. Nice. But, dear God, man, this reel costs 180 bucks, And after an hour of using it, I was just about ready to send it into orbit. Oh, that sucks. Well, let's keep it, let's keep it positive. <laughs> <laughs> let's keep it positive. I don't like, I don't like to, like... I, that's another thing, like, like I, yeah. I, I, I try to avoid, like... Like speaking negatively about any, any companies or anybody, yeah. Um, the worst I'll do is like not speak about them. <laughs> <laughs> like that's like that's me. Like that's like the that's as negative as I can as you can say. I guess you could say. I try to keep it positive too. Yeah. Some some of these people just and especially even, even, even the ones that have it coming, dude. I still feel like you know what? It's okay. They'll some they'll like, the karma will get get to them one day. Like, like I'll they can, just they can say whatever they want to me. Yeah. But they approach my kids. Oh yeah, that's different. or if they misdirect new people, yeah. I will fly off the handle fast, and there'll be all kinds of invective involved. And yeah, <laughs> that's, that's funny. Yeah, yeah. That's unpleasant funny. scenario all the way around. But I mean, I mean, just a few months ago, it was, a few months ago, it's probably a year ago or something. But I had to, I had to rein myself in for a minute and become the coach again. Yeah. So I almost flew off the handle at some really just ding dong antics at the spot I was fishing by some people who were obviously. Obviously not born on the side of the world. Oh, yeah. And yeah, but even that stuff, it's like, what can you do? Like, well, you got you got to be you got to be patient with people. Some people, I mean, I know it's it's extreme. Yeah. I mean, the um, the patience I'm asking for is extreme. <laughs> I understand that. <laughs> But in the end, right, we're all better for it. Yeah, I, I, I I literally just took a step back from myself in my mind a little bit and said, (laughs) "Just be the coach." There's a couple of kids here. If you can't reach the older one, maybe the kids will listen. And a couple of them ended up catching some decent fish out of the same hole where I was working and chumming really hard to try to get these fish all riled up. But (laughs) yeah, it's some sometimes being the coach is a difficult thing. But yeah, yeah, sacrificing a few panfish for the greater good is really not. That said, that was totally wrong of them to do that. <laughs> if if you see somebody chumming a hole, don't go casting it. I mean, to me, it's, to me at this point, it's common sense, right? Yeah, but you would, you would hope that yeah. there'd be some etiquette there. Yeah, and some okay, but that's true. Like, it, but then it comes down to like, okay, well, who, why is it? Why is it? Um, my responsibility to teach somebody etiquette? You know, like it's not my. It's not our responsibility, right. but it is our duty. Yeah, really, at the end of yeah. the day, is yeah. So yeah, it, it is. It is. Uh, you, you can put it out there if they choose to take it. Great. If not, there's really like a certain point where it's like, you know what, like, you know, what you, you know, what's, what's expected. Yeah. If you choose to be a jerk, it's on you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've, uh, I've abandoned fishing spots before and just started again on numerous occasions. Oh, but, that's funny. But, uh, so let's, let's give these listeners some more value. Um, <laughs> let's see. Do you have any other questions? Yeah, I do. Let's go. Where Keep do you, where it. do you, where do you see yourself? You talk about your journey. Where do you see that going in the years to come? Where, where do you feel your next step is? That's what always interests me. Okay. What, what's your next step? Where, where, what are your plans? Where okay. are you going from yeah. here? So I see myself kind of like continuing on the, what I'm going to call the San Diego angler journey, right? Okay. Uh, of course, starts from shore, right? It either goes uh, float tube or kayak. Or sport boat. Or sport boat or like or like a skiff, right? Yeah. Uh, cattle boat, whatever they call it. Um, and, uh, it, in conjunction with spearfishing, cause I'm, I'm also still spearfishing, free diving and stuff. So like my goals for the year, this year is to get, uh, down to a hundred feet. I've done Ooh. 94 feet before. Uh, I, could, I felt like I could have done a hundred, but my safety was waiting for me at the surface and I didn't want to make them wait extra long. So it kind of turned back on what, go- on what could have been a really good dive. It was like so close. <laughs> So I've always, so I've had that in the back of my mind for the past couple of years. Uh, this year, I really want to focus on actually getting that done. And it's, I know it's just a, a hundred feet. It's just a number. It doesn't really matter, but like, I that's just want to get triple digits deal, and be dude. done with it. Right? That's a bigger deal than you're making it out to be. I've yeah. never reached a hundred. I used to dive all the time. I doubt I ever got below 50. <laughs> oh, so, but so, so the thing, the thing, why a hundred, I want to get to a, a working range of like 70 feet. Like I want to be able to get down to 70 feet, Damn feel, it. feel comfortable, look around for a little bit and then come back up and have that confidence of saying, Hey, I've made it to hundred feet. No big deal. Like I can do this, right? Still diving with a partner, diving in the safest way possible, but that's like my goal to get to 100 feet. So that's one. In the fishing aspect, I want to continue on the the San Diego angler journey, which is going to be uh, moving on to bigger fish. So like I've I've shot yellowtail, I've shot dorado, like game fish, but uh, I've haven't caught that many on hook and line, right? So I want to now I want to explore La Jolla on the kayak, and then uh, maybe go for like yellowtail, that kind of uh, bigger pelagic fish, and then um, also get into more boat fishing. So like uh, I've been dabbling in and and starting to find the right mentors for like jig fishing, like surface irons, yo yo irons. Uh, so I want to get that whole uh, that whole line of fishing. Uh, I want to learn that basically. 
When yeah. I learned that and through the learning process, meet the people that know how to do it well, learn from them, and then be able to share that with whoever's following my stuff. Bitching. And then eventually, I mean, we I've already been on a boat where we caught like a 300 pound tuna. Yeah, and I like, saw that. Right? <laughs> so, so I kind of cheated myself, but but still, I'm, I'll be stuck to like uh, to land a fish like on my own, right? Because that was part yeah. of like a group effort. Yeah. And it's still super, it's still super awesome. It's, it's still, still, incre- still an still incredible thing. It's still an incredible <laughs> stoke, yeah? It's still great. But like, uh, it won't, it still means a lot to me, but it won't mean as much as like, uh, my first like surface iron yellowtail, right? Or like my first like uh, just like a uh, like my first white sea bass, right? Like on a on like a squid or something, right? I don't know. I'm gonna drop some knowledge on you right here. All right. Get yourself a couple of ahi salt jigs. Turner, <laughs> Turner's got them for five six bucks. Nice. Seriously. These are like uh, like like when jigs you're you drop when down. you're ready to learn, let me know. Okay. And I will shortcut your learning curve as much as I can. I'm okay. sure. I really don't get on the boats anymore because of my back and everything. Yeah. Same reason I stopped kayaking. Right. But uh, when you're ready, you're ready to pick up the assault jig, you let me know. And I'll shorten your learning curve <laughs> as much as I can. And the learning curve of anybody who watches you as much as I can. That'd be cool. Yeah, that'd be fun. Because the diamond jig's a tool that's been in production for 400 years, four to four to 500 years, yep. maybe a little longer. Yep. And the evolution of the diamond jig through what we understand today and onto the modern variants like the ahi. The, I mean, honestly, the ahi assault jig took shortfalls of prior diamond jig designs and oh, weeded, and weeded okay. a couple of them out that's cool. some really serious problems that a lot of the other diamond jig types had uh, that's cool the butter knife jig the old butter knife yeah. yep yep and the earlier diamond and the i'll say the diamond jigs that they started producing mid-century that's cool so the ahi assault jig takes that puts solid rings on it with really sharp stout hooks and uh when the tuna are hung up at two or three hundred feet you yeah. can absolutely just beat them to death oh, that's that thing. cool <laughs> see that's perfect see, that, see, that, see that's the thing like see that, that's the thing like i i always have the attitude of um uh, i'm not special i'm not i don't know everything right and i let whoever knows stuff just kind of speak to it right speak on it and i'll learn from that but you gotta like i think you have to have that uh, the attitude when, if you want to learn or if you want to improve at anything you want to you have that attitude of um you're kind of like the guest at somebody's house like you know what i mean yeah like uh I'm, you want to be just you 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 have to be approachable, yeah, and you have to be willing to be on the approach too. Right. Otherwise, otherwise you're selling yourself short. Yeah, you know, I mean, guys who are new to party boat fishing, I, I see it all. You know, I I get asked a lot of questions. <laughs> God, I get asked a lot of questions. So, I mean, I remember I sold a combo to a guy, and he goes, "So I load this with braid? No, for, no, don't load it with braid. Don't learn on mono. Mono will forgive you right. for things braid will not. Right. That's yeah. awesome. And it's and I see the I see the I see the narrative pushed hard for, for braid for very for very specific things certain jigs certain types of soft baits yeah no names mentioned yeah. and certain uh, certain types of lines yeah that's uh that's a good point that's a good point um so early when early when I was first started fishing um I was kind of like that too like I only fish certain types of baits and uh, when I when I when I decided to actually get into uh, hook and line fishing I was fishing a lot from shore. And I started at the worst time, like like the beginning of winter. <laughs> well, big spotties in Mission Bay start eating in winter, yeah, but there's but a few and far between. Exactly. So I remember that weekend. It was This is like two years ago, three years ago now, I think. But there's a video I put out a long time ago where it's like, it's actually a compilation of two days worth of fishing, right? And I'm walking around Mission Bay, like everywhere, dude. <laughs> <laughs> All like the burned out spots, casting everywhere from shore, like wondering like what I'm doing wrong, right? Yep. And, uh. I think it's just like I, I didn't know how to fish that bait appropriately. Also, uh, the scarcity of fish during the winter. Uh, <laughs> after like two day, at the at the end of the second day of fishing, it was Super Bowl weekend. I remember because there's people like at those like rentals like watching Super Bowl. I yep. can hear the Super Bowl in the background, and uh, I finally catch a, a spotty. It was like not even a legal spotty. It was like a 12 inch spotty, but it felt like the felt like a giant <laughs> tuna, dude. <laughs> after two days of like just scrounging for one. And like not knowing, like, am I doing this right? Like, I watched all the videos. I, I think I know what I'm doing. Like, what's going on? And so, like, finally, I catch one. It felt like redemption. But looking back at that time now, the reason I bring up that story is I probably could have done a lot better if I just would have fished a drop shot. Oh yeah, you know, like, or sled head or yeah, T rig, whatever. Yeah, exa- exactly, yeah. exactly, exactly. Um, but I was, I don't know. I I I like the I like the way the lure looked. Like it was like a, a, a the lure caught me right instead of me catching fish right. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, dude, Al Kalen on Saturday when I was talking cool. to him, he said, there ain't never been a lure <laughs> that a fish bought. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's so true. Ne- ain't never been a lure that a fish bought. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. 
and we talked about old versus new designs too, because you know he was he's been around. For that, 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 that kind of makes you think of like an old, um, an old. Uh, it's not that's not not that old. But anyway, it's like a, a, somebody was like saying about somebody was talking about dog food and like <laughs> how um, your dog doesn't care what it tastes like, right? But you read all the packaging, it's like oh, new <laughs> flavor enhanced <laughs> organic food, like made with real rice and real chicken. It's like your dog doesn't care. <laughs> Meanwhile, some family in TJ feeds their dog the uh, leftover rice at the I bottom of the rice cooker two days ago. Yeah, it's funny. But yeah, that makes sense. But yeah, you anyway. You were saying you were you, we could have done a lot better if you'd obviously read DJ Thrill's article in the Bay section about yes. the fishing mission Bay, yeah. and then so, you would. So, 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 so now I, I did eventually read that. <laughs> I did eventually find that, and I read through it. it. It's good. It's good. But like, yeah, at the time I was just like, all right, I got what I need. Got a rod and reel. Got some baits. There's some water. Let's go. <laughs> I think I had just gotten my like uh, had just gotten my my extra tough boots, and I was like <laughs> walking through the water, <laughs> so close stepping in the mud. I know, oh I know, it my. sounds lame. I'm I'm lame, guys. I'm just, I'm I'm I, I'm I'm not ashamed of it. That's like the beginner journey, you know. It's like I can look back at it now. Oh, let's talk about shirt lipping because I'm sure that'll drive uh, people, that'll drive oh people a little God. crazy. Oh God, Okay, so so um, a couple of times when I was starting out. Like you, you're new, right? You don't know how to lip a fish, right? And like, I have kids. Yeah, a couple of kids. Me too. Okay, so they're, so they're like they're a little bit older now, but before, like, I have to do everything for them. Little, right? little. Yeah. So shower them, wipe their butts, all that stuff, right? And like, wash my hands a lot frequently. So I don't want to deal with having like uh, scratches on my fingers. I know it sounds uh, like I'm a wuss, and that's fine. You can call me a wuss if you want. Dude, I've had spotties draw blood lots of times, yeah. many, many yeah, times. So, and then, and then, like you, so, you see posts where people got infections on their thumb. It's like yep. the last thing I want is to have an infection on my hands. Like yep. for me, like I play guitar. I I have a, I have a desktop. I have like a, a desk job where I type all the time. So I don't want anything to that remotely comes close to damaging my fingers. Right. Yeah. Right. So so that's like my my priorities to my and my health. Right. And so like uh, I thought it would be a good idea to to take the end of my long sleeve. Put it over my thumb yeah. and lip the fish with my thumb inside of my sleeve, right? And for some reason, that just drove people nuts. <laughs> Especially a couple people. Yeah. Let's just say there's yeah. a couple people that really drove them nuts. Yeah. And so, like, at first, I was like, ah, okay, like, no big deal. Like, like I'd rather lip the fish with the with my sleeve than, like mishandle it and and have it have it like fall fall onto the deck of my kayak or or cut the crap out of your hand which lots right. of fish have done to me over the years because i'm careless and <laughs> dumb <laughs> right so like uh so, so then like I, I did that for a while a couple of my, and there's like there's a good uh, amount of my videos of when i first started where i lift the fish with my sleeve because after after that after those people had like some issues with it i thought it'd be funny to just kind of like pull them a little bit <laughs> i keep doing it like i call it i call it shirt lipping and everything i made it a term for it right and, and also because uh, par- partly because I felt like I was getting picked on for being a new guy. Of course. Right. And then, and then like, but I can see the kind of their perspective too. Like y- you should be lipping it with your finger for whatever reason. Right. Cause it's more manly or whatever. Well, it also protects the fish from abrasions inside the mouth and right. stuff too. Okay. I, I mean, obviously. right. But even still, like it was better for me to lip it with the shirt than for it to flop on the deck and just to get anyway. Right. Yeah. I mean, you're right. Yeah. A, co- a couple of abrasions yeah. in the mouth definitely beat scarring down the whole side of the body from this thing <laughs> thrashing around in your foot. Well, <laughs> right. exactly. So that was that was my reasoning behind it. Eventually, like now, I lip it like 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 not not like a pro, but like a from normal normal lip, I guess. <laughs> um, and if you're if you're new to fishing, especially like spotties, um, don't lip a halibut for sure, right? <laughs> <laughs> no matter what they tell you. Uh, and but and when you're lipping a bass. Uh, you got to focus on putting the tip of your thumb behind its uh, behind its teeth. Yes. So kind of like you're lipping it from the gums. The soft part of the jaw, yeah, not the, the hard back. part of the exactly. jaw is where you grab. So you can almost put the whole side of your, you can put your whole, the whole side of, of your thumb inside the back part of its teeth. Like when you're new to it, you assume that lipping means you put your thumb right on the <laughs> teeth. And then, of course, bodies every single time you catch them. Like as soon as you put your thumb in there, I think you're like, oh, well, this, is, this tastes gross. <laughs> and they thrash and you get that initial thrash. That's where you usually get the, the initial cuts and then yep. you're done for the day. Um and then I also like didn't, didn't see like the difference between people that were complaining about it and then posted videos or, or pictures of them with tape on their finger. I'm yeah, like, dude, yeah, they taped their finger after it got destroyed yeah, by like, his body. <laughs> 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 like you're, you're bothering me about lipping a uh, fish with a shirt and you have tape on your hand. Like ah. at that point, I knew it was just like something else. Like yeah, it, yeah. So yeah, it was pretty funny. But now like I lip them normally, and and a, a, a little tip besides uh lipping them behind the teeth is if you're new to it, realize that the fish is not used to what you taste like. 
because everything in their mouth has like uh, they, it's like your mouth if you put anything in your mouth you're gonna taste it right so when they first taste your finger it's gonna be weird <laughs> and they're gonna flop around so what i what i like to do is you have the fish on the line it's hanging from the hook i wouldn't lip it from the bottom lip unless there's a unless the hook is stuck on the top if the hook is on the bottom lip i try to i'll, I'll use my fish grips and take the hook out that way but if the lip is on the top lip and the bottom lip is completely free no no hooks in the area then i'll hold it up by the line i'll touch its mouth and let it get a taste and it'll freak out and then the second time i put my finger in it, it won't thrash interesting yeah see i don't do any of this lipping nonsense <laughs> i just grab the thing and wrench the hook out and just throw and pitch him <laughs> you, know, you you hold it from the side like by yeah. the gills yeah. yeah i just grab it right behind yeah. the head where he can't get me with the back of that gill plate although yeah. they occasionally still yeah. do but yeah. i mean that's funny but I just I put my hand around the body of the yeah. fish right behind the pectoral fin. And yep, yep, yep. Ratchet down on Mr. Dum Dum, and then I smash the hook out of his face. That's funny. I think I like to lip it from the actual lip and support the body with the other hand when you hold it like uh, parallel to the to the camera. Because I like to take I like I hold it for the camera, so that's why. <laughs> you just like you just like unhook it and throw it over. Like I'll, I'll unhook it, hold it up for the camera, and be like cheese, and then. Chuck it, yeah. And then preferably with the no skunk going on there. The no skunk, yeah. <laughs> First fish always gets a no skunk logo. <laughs> you missed one in one video, I, I remember. Did. I know. <laughs> I was waiting for somebody to say something. It's funny. Yeah, man. So when are you uh when are you gonna go out to my old stomping grounds and pick my brain about it? Oh man. See the thing is like I fished there three nights a week for like six, seven years <laughs> from the kayak. I used to spend the night at the kelp all the time. Oh, nice. Did it not all the time, but like five, six times a year, I'd go out and spend the night at the kelp. That's cool. Like right now, there's no kelp though. I mean, there is, but it's like mostly oh, down. It's, it's growing quick, yeah, I son. So. Yeah, I hope so. You should have seen La Jolla the other day. It was clear as glass. I was like, That's cool. what the? I haven't seen it like that. And no sand. Oh, wow. All the sand is gone. Oh, weird. Oh, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like seven, eight feet of sand missing. So I dove um, La Jolla about two, three weeks ago. Yeah, it was beautiful. Like, I don't know what it's going to be like after this rain, but I want to go back. So it's so like I, I want to go back and launch from La Jolla shores on the kayak and take my spear gun and stuff and just like dive. Yeah, just, la- just wait till it's flat and launch at Marine Street. It's a lot closer. Oh, that's true. That's true. And you have that ramp to wheel the thing down on nice. the side. That's true. And if you get there early, nobody's parked there. Yeah. Even the surfers don't show up usually at kayakers hours. We're coming down that ramp with the Hobie 14. I I mean, go check it out. See if you think, <laughs> yeah, you know, it's a, like, ah, here it comes. They just jump on the kayak <laughs> as it's going down. You're like, just ride it down the hill. Like, ah. Got a pretty good drop off at the end. <laughs> I, I know. know. <laughs> I would do that. <laughs> But, uh, but then again, you're talking to a guy who used to heave his 100-pound kayak over his shoulder and carry it all over the place. Oh, so. And the other thing is, like, getting back up that hill. <laughs> I don't think that, they, that it would be that hard. I mean, you'd have to obviously have to yeah. check it out, see if yeah. it's doable. But uh, I actually know where there's and some. Coming, and then coming back up the hill with, like, a with like a 60-pound white sea bass. I was like going to say, I know, I know where some white oh, sea bass oh, are right now. Yeah, I know where cool. some white sea bass were just two days ago. Oh, I had a nice. guy tell me. Nice. Yeah, there's yeah. there's benefits of being the coach. I mean, I realize I'm a, yeah. I'm a big goldfish in a very small tank, but. <laughs> Um, but yeah, people, people share stuff with you because they see you contributing. They see you trying to help yeah. the new people. That's cool. So anytime you need uh, some Intel Roman, you hit me up. Oh, well, and if I, if I've got it, I'll share it with you. Awesome. I, I couldn't help but notice that the yellow tail were beating the crap out of some Jack mackerel on my old stomping grounds the other night. And I remember thinking if I'd been out there right now, I'd probably be roping them. <laughs> yeah. That's so good. <sighs> but good. I keep my ear to the ground, and you know I look at the water several times a week, so Perfect. You, you can always get the lowdown from me if I have it. Cool. Always. I'll hit you up. That'd be good. You got anything else you want to share, or uh, would you it's... would you be willing to do a collab with Cast and Spear other than through me? What do you mean? Like, uh... Just go do a dive or whatever. Oh, yeah, that's fine. Or, or shore fishing. You know, I fish shore fish in La Jolla, Sunset Cliffs. Yeah, that'd be cool. Do that'd it all cool. the time. Yeah. Um, that'd be fun. Um, I'm mostly hook and line fishing, but like I said... My goal for the free diving stuff is to get the hundred feet dive in. Once that du- once that's done, then I'll do more actual spear fishing. I just want to I just want to get all the dive time focused on the deep dive for now, because then it's off my bucket <laughs> list. <laughs> I know what that feeling you know is mean? like. You know what I mean, <laughs> so, and then like between like my regular job and like doing the the regular YouTube stuff, and then I'll, I'm also doing uh, the Spear Podcast, which is yeah. another show. Um, my dive times are limited. Yeah. Uh, but so I do want to spend the, whatever dive time I do have with dive partners on what I'm focusing on. But after that, then yeah, I'll, I'll be I'll be. Well, I got my ear to the ground, and I'm not going anywhere anytime soon awesome. unless my tests come back different this next month. Uh huh. We'll see. Very. I fought it off twice so far. We'll see how I do in round three. Oh man, that's crazy. That's crazy. Time always is always short. Yeah. Always. Yeah. You gotta you gotta you gotta do what you we gotta do what makes you happy. You know, if if it is doing weird stuff like me and putting out <laughs> videos about yourself fishing and, and trying to help people that maybe don't want your help, right? <laughs> it's true because I know there's I know there's that too. I, I I'm 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 realistic. I, I understand that my stuff is not for everybody, you know, but well if your stuff isn't for everybody, my stuff's really not for everybody. <laughs> no, but here's no but that's, that's but that's the thing, like 
if, if uh, and it sounds kind of weird to say that this way, but if you help one other person, right? Yeah. And then that's that feels good. You know, you help somebody, and and like they'll they'll hopefully carry it on forward, right? And then if you if you've documented the way that you've helped somebody, maybe you'll continue to help people when you're gone. Maybe so. You know, and that's kind of that's super cool to think about. Well, that's why I've tried to do so many videos with with everybody, whether it's uh, Zach from Dog Dog Dune Drone or John from Cast and Spear or you or any of the podcasts I've been on or any of the you know I just try I just hope that those words eventually reach somebody right when I wrote that document on SD Fish how to fish the Imperial Valley yeah I mean good. that's one of the most rated helpful posts of all time and and maybe rightly so but I mean I I hope. I hope I can reach at least a few people and change. And I think you have, like, just in the time you put in to take people out to teach them how to fish with a fixed line pole. That's, I'm not going to forget that. I'm serious, <laughs> right? Um, and so you taking the time to do that for me was was great. Like, you didn't have to do that. I didn't pay you to do that, <laughs> right? It's more of an annoyance than anything else, right? I mean, not, I'm not saying it was annoying, but it's more of a inconvenience for you to just enjoy your day of fishing, right? Uh, so No, I'd rather teach some young ding-dong how to <laughs> how to get the bait in front of the fish and keep it there. I, <laughs> and, you know what I mean? It's like, like I've said, and like I've often said, and uh, an experience I had last year really kind of drove it home to me. Yeah. This kid walks down the beach. We're fishing La Jolla, or south of, south of the children's pool. We're there fishing, and this guy shows up with some Zebco from Walmart that's tangled nine ways from Sunday, and it's just a mess. And this kid's mom is like, I could tell she wants to ask, but she doesn't want to bother me. So, you know, she kind of walks up, like, Come here, come here, here, take my spare rod. Let me bait it up. Let's get you in the pocket here. We've been yeah. chumming along this break for like yeah. the last 45 minutes. Two minutes in, the guy pulls out a black surfer, like 13, 14 <laughs> inches long. <laughs> yeah, you know, like pretty, pretty solid pound, yeah. pound and a half surfer. That's awesome. And he was just all excited about it. His mom's like, we have dinner. That's awesome. I said, you know, I haven't heard anything since, so I don't know if she's joined Dusty Fish or not. Right. But, you know, I said, hey, join Dusty Fish. I fish three nights a week. I'm happy I'm happy to teach any kid how to fish, any yeah. new person how to fish. Yeah. I'm happy to hang out with anybody anytime and help them figure out. Because what I do is very basic. It's very easy. It's very cheap. There's no complicated equipment. There's nothing expensive to buy, whether it's fixed line fishing or right. just fishing the troughs between the rocks. I mean, yeah. what are you out, 60 bucks? But it's totally, it's, it's it gets you in the game. You, you get the fill a stoke for it and then yeah. you know and where where you go from there i realize that what i do isn't for everybody and a lot of anglers are way past anything i would typically be able to help them with so to speak but the fact that i can help new people and encourage new folks to get into the sport it's yep. easy it's affordable yep. there's nothing difficult about it or intensive required i think that we have this mythos in our culture that fishing is expensive and difficult and you need this lure and you need yeah. that line and you need this rod built by these people. Yeah. And it's just totally not true. I mean, you can get into fishing with a Cuban yo-yo and go down <laughs> to the jetty and not even not know true. anything. And, sure. you, and you could go make good on it and catch some fish. You totally yeah. could. Yeah. You could go cut a piece of cane 10 feet long, drag it down there. Yeah. And you could be into dinner in no time. It would just take a little know-how. And that's really what I'm trying to get at with as many people as I can. So that's, that's why I am absolutely chomping at the bit to take you out to the imperial valley <laughs> there is no fishing like that on earth anywhere 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 i've been i've been a lot of places i've nice. caught one heck of a lot of fish central america the yeah. islands wherever yeah. i've been there <laughs> the caribbean i've been there the central atlantic i've been there the indian ocean i've been there nice and i'm telling you 100 miles from anybody or maybe 125 150 miles from anywhere in southern california where you're likely to live there's this place and this place is absolutely loaded out the ass with fish <laughs> at the tune of something like four to seven tons per linear mile with something like 4,000 to 8,000, depending on how you count it and who you believe, 4,000 to 8,000 linear miles of water to be had. Wow. And at a couple of tons per mile? Yeah, that's, that's amazing. Yeah, it's... So I'm, I'm going to be doing a lot of... Um, a lot of go fish cam stuff. Um, I really like that perspective of like the underwater lure. I mean, for me, it's like cheating, right? But I like it. It's like uh, <laughs> you get to see like what you feel, right? Like, yeah. Like, yeah, it, there's a, the, of course, you should be able to fish without a camera, of course, but, it, and it doesn't live stream. So you have to like do it like in post, like, but yeah. you'll see like, oh, that was a bite. I wonder what that was. Right? You're never going to get to know, but this time you'll know. Yeah. yeah. I would love to see one of those so, get put down one of the tubes out in the Imperial Valley. One what of I'm the saying. pipes under the yeah. road. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. We put that thing out there. Be nuts. That just, would be cool. Just like, just what it looks like down there. Like, it could what? also be so depressing realizing how many that. fish that you don't catch that are under <laughs> there. But then you could, you could figure something out because then you'll know they're there, right? Yeah. Like you'll know where to target. So anyway. 
so if we go to the Imperial Valley, I'm, uh, I'm waiting to get like a, a couple of extra ones so that we have a, a longer record time. We'll go. We'll do the underwater stuff, and uh, hopefully we'll catch uh, we'll catch a ton of fish, and then we'll see what's down there. And I've talked to John about this too. There's a lake out there, and the only posted rule it has it says no diving shallow water off this concrete dock. Concrete dock visible in my latest post for the people oh, like no following me on this. No, no diving, like literally, like no, yes. no like like don't no, don't jump off of jump here. The, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it seemed like there'd be an awful lot of carp in there. And if the water was clear enough, you could definitely sneak up on one and shoot him square. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm sure our uh, our peoples over in England and Europe would love that, but <laughs> yeah, most, like most here, people are a little it's, weird it's about so, carp. It's, it's considered an invasive species here, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And believe me, there is zero shortage in the Imperial Valley. Yeah, uh, we'll, I mean, we'll, we'll figure it out. We'll get the rules ahead of time before we get out there. But, I mean, it seems like there wouldn't be. Could you launch kayaks there? It's not big. It, you can cast across this thing. Oh, okay. All the bodies of water in the Imperial Valley that I know of, yeah. with only a couple of exceptions, are very small. Oh, so you can get it's in. just there's lots of them. Yeah. There's so many miles of stuff to explore and crazy drains and just it's it's so weird. I, I'm totally looking forward to John getting that footage out on Cast and Spear Channel that's on funny. YouTube and that's good. Yeah, and because we went for like a whole day, caught you know. I mean, mostly smaller catfish, but there was a, quite a few good ones in the mix. And he's got me nabbing that 20-pound carb on camera. <laughs> that's, really was, awesome. that's the biggest fish I've hooked into in a minute. And I mean, this carp was fat and long. I'd say at least, I'd say at least 20 pounds. Nice. But, nice. you know, it dove through the weeds. There's all these weeds everywhere. It's just, it was chaos. I almost fell off. That would have made good footage right there. Me falling off that piece of concrete. I had two knees on with my bad back trying to hold Ouch. on to this piece of wood. Ouch. Yeah, it was uh, it was interesting, but I'm really looking forward to that footage because that's a place that could have a thousand anglers tomorrow and they wouldn't see each other. Oh, wow. I mean, it's it's how that place is. It, you could be fishing with 500 people and never see them. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah. And it's just the same as uh, you, you just need your California license? Yep. No stamps, no tags, no nothing. That's cool. Camp and sleep where you want, have a fire where you want, uh, roast hot dogs on the side of the road, whatever. That's cool. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's got to be like an overnighter, huh? It helps. It helps, yeah. And that first couple of hours after dark, a lot of times, like the magic hour. That's when you can really, that's when you get busted off by some tanks and you're hooking <laughs> fish in pipes. You're, and, you're, you're hooking all that, you're uh, fishing. Uh, like what was that show with the uh, on Discovery Channel where the guys fishing like tuna gear in rivers and stuff like river monsters? Or whatever. We I, I just use light gear because by the time we should use a we should take a big old fat hook and take a take a fifty pound rig out there. I've done that, but I used to big do that old when, chunk of something on there. I used to do that when I was a kid. When I was a young man, what I, happens? I'd go That'd out be there. Fun. I'd go out there with salt water with my <laughs> jig stick, and I had like this two ounce lead head. I put a strip of carp on there, like ten inches long, and I'd work it over all the big water. Uh, that's funny. Caught so many flatheads. Oh I yeah, got, yeah. I caught a twenty six pound striper when I was seventeen out there. That's a fish I haven't caught yet. I've seen them in the water of like spearfishing. I've seen them in the water swimming around, but I would like to catch one on hook and line. That sounds fun. It's like a striper. Yeah. The big the problem with the Imperial Valley is all the big fish are gone because harvest has declined over the years. There's no fishing culture out there. Oh. That's one of the reasons I'm trying to get more people engaged in taking fish out of the water out there is so that we can have bigger fish in the future out there. Some places, like the smallmouths, are all 10 inches long. It's really sad. They're sunken in bellies, sunken in eyes. Oh, because they don't have enough to eat? Yeah, well, th there's just so many. Yeah. And, and and keep in mind, all these bodies of water are small. Oh, yeah. So stunting's a real problem. And in some places, they're unfishable because the fish are stunted and messed up. But in areas where we've had good harvest going on, like the drains in the north, some of the, big, some of the bigger reservoirs and stuff, yeah. you can get pretty nice fish out of there. Because because they're not all competing for like yeah. a limited amount of food. Yeah, well, it's the same thing in the water around here. Excessive catch and release combined yeah. with, aka no take, yeah. no take combined with heavy fishing effort means yeah. fish that are smaller and harder to catch as a rule. Oh, that's so the, cool. So the bass fishermen around San Diego, thank you. You've totally destroyed your own <laughs> fishery. When I was a kid, I saw stringers of 10-pounders leaving Otai. Wow. Stringers. Like, like they had 10 pound bass and five yeah. of them and they were carrying yeah. them out the door. And so that keeps those bass hungry, keeps them growing at the maximum rate, keeps them. Keeps the forage around too. Yeah. So it makes them easier to catch over time. You catch more of them, yeah. you catch bigger, the bass are healthier, they grow faster so they can retain larger maximum size. Yep. And I mean, our lakes here in San Diego County, if you put all of them together, the lake my cousin lives on in Arkansas, you could fit every lake in here in oh, San Diego wow. County, you could fit it in there 80 times over or something. Oh, wow. I don't know. Yeah, I'm sure you yeah. didn't see my report from there, but that's cool. It was, I mean, I caught, I don't know, probably two or three hundred pounds of catfish in the course of a week, with a fixed line off of a dock with a bobber <laughs> on it. 
<laughs> I am not kidding. Perfect for the camera. <laughs> I would sit out there with a beer, and I would watch the bomber. And when it went under, I would go down the elevator, walk out onto the dock, and I would haul the catfish out. And they were like 15, 20 pounds, a lot of them. <sighs> it was crazy. Is there, is there a way to target a bigger fish, like in that situation? Or? Live bait. Oh, yeah. Okay. Live bait's your friend, you know. Yeah. Uh, they call them brim in the regulations in Arkansas, yeah. and that's any sunfish under five inches long. Okay. So you hook one of those through the back. Yeah, small one. And then you, could you could you make that bait? Oh yeah, like like an uh, Imperial Valley and stuff. The Imperial Valley is crazy because it has all these rules that don't exist elsewhere. Like in California, it's illegal to do things that aren't okay. Right. It's not. It's illegal to do these things. It's right. illegal to do anything we tell you you can't do. Right. That's how our laws are written here. Right. In Arkansas, it's the other way around. But in the Imperial Valley, it's the list of live, dead, and cut bait is long. It's oh. mud suckers and mullet and uh, sunfish and crappies. It just all this stuff is on there. Goldfish. You can use live goldfish in the Imperial Valley. Oh, that's crazy. And you can chum in the Imperial Valley legally <laughs> with any bait fish listed. Oh, wow. So this means you can haul a 20-pound carp out, take the hatchet to his happy carcass, <laughs> cut him into chunks, and throw him in a corner of the reservoir and come back later, like, say, after nightfall. <laughs> With your 40-pound rig and hook, like, a the head off of a one- or two-pound carp on and pitch it out into that same pocket where you did all that chumming. Yeah. And chances are very, very good that something is going to be there waiting for you. Like a giant catfish. Maybe not the 60-pounders a days gone by. Maybe some yeah. 20s or 30s. But still. Oh, that'd be a fun fight. Still. Still a darn nice fish. Yeah. So, I mean, the Imperial Valley affords... Southern California angler, anglers a taste of West Texas or, or East Texas or Arkansas or yeah. Southern Mississippi without having to go to Texas, Arkansas, or Southern <laughs> Mississippi. So it's it's an interesting place, and it's really, it really is like fishing on the moon. Yeah, that's like, cool. I, I mean, I try to describe it to people, and they're like, oh, yeah, I know what it's like. I take them out there. They're like, no, man, I, this, this place is weird. And it is. It's really strange. You're surrounded by life all the time. That's cool. It's, it's really a weird place, but just an incredible fishery there. And as long as we keep our harvest up, those catfish and carp will only get bigger in the future. As long as we keep pulling them out of there. Right. That's cool. If you're a single species fisherman and you're listening to this, I don't care if it's calicos or yellowtail or largemouth, I ask you to just take a step back from yourself and see what you could teach a new person. If, there, if there's anybody out there that listens to this and you're like, oh, no, I only chase yellowtail. I don't care about it. If you could just take one minute out of your day, you could teach one new person something good, something that will help them on this journey. You know, get, grab an old rod out of the garage that you haven't looked at in 25 years, put some old reel on there, and hand it to a new person and see if you can get them to buy a fishing license. It's super important that we sell licenses because that's the only real place where enforcement comes from and habitat restoration. All that stuff comes generated from fishing licenses, yeah. something that the antis don't understand. So if we could get one more person into this, even if we each could, yeah, it would be an amazing thing. Awesome. And, and, and I hope... I hope everyone's journey branches out and you guys catch all kinds of different crap and you're having fun and you're keeping a few. Exactly. Yeah. And I, rec I recommend uh, you start with the smaller species and enjoy that stoke of catching that small fish and then work your way up the chain. Don't don't go for tuna right off the bat because <laughs> you're going to cheat yourself out of all the stoke of catching your next biggest fish, your next personal best, uh, your next first species of one, and then you and then you beat that personal best on that species, and then you're down the road until you eventually get to like the big dogs, like the like the bluefin and that kind of stuff. And and by the time you get to that level, you will also would have built up a lot of experience on how gear works, settings, lines, hooks, lures, all that stuff that comes from learning gradually. That's something I recommend both in hook and line fishing and in spear fishing. Work your way up the food chain. Don't start at the top because you're gonna cheat yourself out of that stoke. And don't worry, even if you do find your way onto bluefin or swordfish, trust me, take it from an old guy who's been there and done that, you can go back to catching those saltwater panfish again. Sure. You can. Trust me, I know all about it. Ask me sometime if you see me on the jetty or out on the shore someplace. I'll, I'll be happy to fill you in on uh, how the journey goes on the other side. Awesome. Thank you so much, Roman. I appreciate it, man. Well, and for, for me, if, if you wanted to uh, reach out to me or, or see some of my stuff, I'm on Instagram, at Roman Castro. Um, on YouTube, Roman Castro Vlogs. And all that stuff and links to all that stuff can be found at romancastro.com. And don't forget baywars.com. Yep, all and, and the Spotty Republic on Facebook too. Make sure, make sure if you have any questions about anything that Roman does, hit him up. He's a good dude. He'll help you out. He'll steer you to me if you can't find me. I, I can be difficult <laughs> to find sometimes. 
unless you're on SD Fish, in which case I'm unavoidable like a bad odor. Uh, but SD Fish, <laughs> SD Fish is fun. I, re- I recommend that site too. It's uh, you gotta you gotta uh have a little bit thick, have a, have like some thick skin, but there's a lot of good people there that are that are willing to help, so, including Coach. So so go check them out. SDFish.com too. Yeah, thank you so much, Roman. I appreciate you taking all the time and effort to do this. Seriously, thank you, thank you, thank you. It was it was fun. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, you betcha, man. Well, that does it for this episode of the podcast. Huge thank you to Coach and Roman for coming on and sharing your guys' wisdom. I love the fact that you guys talked about getting our fishing licenses. If you haven't already done so, make sure you get yours because you want to make sure you get as much fishing as possible this year and let our government know that, hey, you love to fish and we should keep it open and keep protecting our resources. Until next time, keep those lines tight. See ya.